Fred Film Radio, 76th edition of the Venice Film Festival. And today I'm joined by Kathleen Gebel. Welcome. Thank you very much for having me. So that's your film is the first film that I watched. Mm -hmm. And we're talking about Pelican Blood, Pelican mm -hmm. Blood. Uh, we can simply start from the title and also the imagery behind the title they kind of probably like started everything off you mm -hmm. know and so because it's a very it's a very this is just my comment of course but it's incredibly courageous the way that you combine so many different topics and then you make it into one thing you know thank you it. that you say so because of course uh, in the beginning it's always a chaos uh, mm -hmm. uh, on the page <laughs> but uh, there were so many things i felt when i digged into this uh, theme that i felt i want to explore the complexity of mm -hmm. it and um, it's great you feel that it uh, uh, that i managed so in fact, Pelican Blood is um, based on a myth that is already coming from the antique and was also used in Christianity. The mother pelican who feeds her dead offspring with her own blood and this brings them back to life. And I felt um, when I researched about um, uh, mothers or families who take in children, for example, that have this uh, reactive attachment disorder, this trauma, this weird behavior that uh, Raya shows, that they are um, very quickly um, feeling the boundaries of treatment. So um, what medicine and psychology and all of them can do is quite limited sometimes. And I felt she will need to give more and she will also have to in a way um, go her very own way and all the society norms and the people around her who start to talking to her like don't do this bring the child back mm -hmm. to an orphanage and things that she needs to um, find her very own uh, way of uh, approaching the problem and uh, their solution is not there in the beginning mm -hmm. but also she not only uh, finds a way to to approach the child in another way and the problem of the child but also i think she learned something about herself in a way so when you see her in the very first shots of the film she will look completely different in the end so she's also going through a metamorphosis because it's my true belief when you are um, confronted with a person that is not the norm is different from what you know. Um, uh, not only this person has to change. I think it's very important to make an effort to change yourself. And the way you deal with each other is also not scripted, maybe. So you have to find your own way. But it's worth uh, the effort, I believe. <laughs> and tell me, the, it was very interesting as well what you uh, touched it upon earlier. The idea of going, you know, needing more, more to explain, more to resolve this issue. You think it's also because of the idea, the concept itself of motherhood, which goes beyond any understanding. You know, yeah. even from a male perspective, for example, it goes beyond my understanding, although I try to. Mm. And therefore, you go into the almost this new level of uh, reality, you know, mm -hmm. supernatural reality. Mm -hmm. The research behind that, for example, how did you combine the two things? Because you know, we still, you know, in the Germany, so mm. but we have this almost voodoo. You know, it's been talked about voodoo. Maybe it's not specifically voodoo, but I just wanna hear like the research behind it and how you combine the things together yes yeah, so i mean before I, I, I wouldn't call it voodoo i would maybe call it uh, witchcraft yeah. <laughs> uh, but actually i know people and that's where i also got my research from in germany who practice this kind of mm. uh, things there are people that say i don't work with kids but also there are people who say in particular i can help you with this uh, problem and uh, I, when i researched i mean in the um, paganism you know in old German times in a way it, it was more common and I felt let's go and more backwards or she has to look more into nature what is coming from the human being when you are confronted with a dilemma or where do you find your power and because I think in our society we really we have the need uh, to have this tran transcendence to feel uh, uh, faith uh, to hold on to something bigger and um, how what could be the way Wiebke could explore this and yeah so I, I met uh, really exciting people I have to say and uh, I think it was in every way very positive uh, they were really supportive and yeah and also to reach that transcendence as well mm. through film you yes. gotta have the right face and the right performance and yes. of course you know like we talking about of course the character of Vivke, Baraya, Niki all together as well mm. What was the work uh, behind it? So how much you actually uh, rehearsed before shooting or maybe it was something natural that happened during the shooting and you took your time while 
I think it's a mix because you have to find the right people anyway. Yeah. So um, uh, the casting was really important so that I felt they, they can actually be there. And, um, you know, also with set design and costume and everything, um, I, I really had to make the right choices also for the team people because they would add to, to what I was thinking. You know, the actors always, they interpret it or, or f um, they emotionalize ideas I'm having but it's so great if something that you are um, scripting in the beginning that um, it kind of grows like a flower in a way and um, and uh, it feels more real when other people take part in it because it's it's because they, for example an actor really experiences things and um, a costume designer really knows how to to push and um, so I think um, that was uh, uh, or is the main thing I believe in um, was working with team or crew members in general and with these actors in particular so um, the children they need uh, another way of working than a grown up so Nina is super skilled she has super much experience and you work on you start on a very high level you talk a lot and then she has some improvisations or whatever and then you 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 know I'm going there or this is what I like to explore you can immediately edit it <laughs> and with the children they really have to rehearse and prepare a lot and I had a great uh, children's coach Simona who was also the mother of the uh, Raya of uh, Katarina and um, uh, and she worked with the children from the moment I casted them but also one really hardcore mo uh, mo uh, month where they spent time at the sea and where they for example Kati she couldn't um, uh, read uh, and she couldn't remember the lines that way so they drew the entire script in images and th then also when you shoot you can point the image you know you, she remembers the emotion she remembers what she drew so it's a very different approach of working with actors but that was really helpful you know to have a coach who, who knows this kind of techniques and then I had a uh, rehearsal week where I put Nina, Muratan, the yeah. Benedict and the two children together in order to create a family emotion for all of them and to have the trust to yeah. be able to and of course for each other to know how you work together for in the process of shooting a movie because when you have a big team on board and the pressure of a shoot you don't have time to do um, the big things, you have to do the little yeah. things. Uh, yeah. And tell me, one last question, but I'm kind of interested because I really uh, sensed your, uh, the cinematic language that you used, you know, mm -hmm. the lexicon that you used. Um, did that happen kind of like almost naturally as we spoke? Um, and so you knew exactly, you know, with the, for, for example, the, the usage of the slow motion mm -hmm. or the panning, you know, that it, it meant something. So you kind of drew upon different films on different, you know, maybe directors that you really admire mm -hmm. or you knew already that that was exactly the, the style and the, you know, the lexicon no, to be used. No, uh, it's funny. It's always until the very end. For me, I know there are directors who work differently, but I'm influenced until the very end because it depends on money sometimes, on the location, uh, it depends on um, what feels right on set sometimes. You, sometimes you see something you had in mind, you thought it would be just brilliant and then you see it and you're like, nah. <laughs> and with the slow motions, I always felt I, I want to show that there is a particular moment when Wiebke finally feels I'm going to get it, you know? and. Um, uh, I didn't want it to show it so concrete, not to spoil something, but uh, I felt if I just watch her face in a slow motion moment, you see that something changes, that she finally believes in something. And um, then I felt it could be interesting to have her in the very beginning when she's so full of... Um, uh, to, so full of positive uh, thoughts she's mm -hmm. adopting a child um, to have like a first chapter thing in a way and then uh, on the midpoint uh, I use another s longer slow motion because it's a moment where you see well this is totally going the opposite way so I felt it's something I could use I shot it but I was never sure I will edit it uh, so it's something in the editing we felt in the right way in the right speed also <laughs> would work and and the same with uh, location and grading so 
you have ideas in mind, but when you feel it's working out with music, it was very fine work to not be too much in the, for example, genre direction, but also to be on the right emotion in a way and to also be in the cool style I like. And <laughs> uh, yeah, it's always uh, it's a process with the team members, like with the cinematographer and uh, the comp uh, composer and everybody involved. Yeah. <laughs> Well, that was fantastic. Thank you so much, Catherine. Thank you Thank so you much, here. too. We're talking about, again, Pelican Blood, Pelican Blood, Section Horizonti. So go and watch it if you're here in yeah, Venice. Yeah, watch it. It was really good. <laughs> Thank you again. Thank you.